What's up guys, Skillionaire here and today I'm going to be answering the most question, common question of all. What country is best? Which country shall I buy? Etc. I have organized these troopers here by the ages, Western Europe, Middle... Sorry, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Western Asia, Eastern Asia. So, I've used the medic here to represent France because they don't have their own infantrymen. The LMG guy for Great Britain, the Flammenwerfer for Germany, a regular soldier for Abstract and the Gas Mortar for Hungary. First thing I'm going to do is put the LMG guy at the very top because I do think Britain is the best choice you can go into as Western Europe. No, it is not bias. They are actually a really good option. They have very strong Industrial Revolution 1 power. They can combine their LMG troopers with howitzer, just a really good combination. Uh, it's a lot of range and your enemy typically has difficulty dealing with it. They could try and counter you with air I suppose but the LMG guys can shoot up in the air. They don't do tons of aviation damage but they can do some and then of course you can make your own regular uh, anti-air stuff as well because of course they have abstract to, they have access to some abstract things uh, and so on. And I think it's worth mentioning that they have a lot of sea power as well. They can build those turrets in the sea. There's access to the dreadnought and so on. So I do think they're the strongest option you can go for. Second place I think I would probably give to Abstract. It's a close one. Uh, well, it's not that close, really. I, I just think Abstract is one of the best options you could possibly go for. They have access to everything. In fact, let me bring it up here. So this was Great Britain's options, in case any of you don't have the sandbox. And here is the Abstract options, which, of course, some of these options are available for the other countries as well and if you look at it here just abstract has has everything they can do everything you know and um and i think that makes them really strong one thing to bear in mind which is really important here is that when you go to industrial revolution in this game realistically you'll still have access to your middle ages units so that's worth bearing in mind for abstract because each abstract is going to be different because they're going to have access to different middle ages units and in my opinion, the Western Europe versions are probably one of the weakest Middle Ages units you can have supporting you. Because once you reach Industrial Revolution, you want cheap Middle Ages units to support you. Anyway, I'll get to that later. I'll get to that later. So, what's going in third place? I think it's probably... Oh man, it's a close one between Austria-Hungary and Germany. I'm going to give it to Germany just, just, just about. I think they're more useful in more scenarios. So uh, these Flammenwerfers, when they get to Industrial Revolution 2, you can upgrade them to Armoured and they're pretty cool there. And of course the Cannon Colossal is pretty a uh, fun thing to have. And uh, I know this isn't about fun. I already have a tier list for fun, by the way, if you want to check that out in terms of which countries and which factions are the most fun. But um this is purely about what's good, in my opinion, of course. And I do think that Germany, in terms of like big team games, you know, massive 20 versus 20 and stuff, and even just 10 versus 10, like, you know, the kind of colossal can apply some pressure. And just generally speaking, the bigger the map, the more resources you might have access to, you have more time to farm. So I think Germany has a niche there in the bigger games. Um, but then again, you know, maybe you can win with them in 1v1s as well. X Factor Live has done it before. I have a video for the channel on the channel of that. Speaking of niches, I think Austria-Hungary has a very good niche, really, of, very, of uh, defending. Of course, you can make Kassabas. I should show you Germany as well, sorry. That really the Oh, and Big Berthas, actually, I should comment on. Big Berthas and Flammenwerfers are decent. Uh, in terms of Austria-Hungary, I do think Kassabas are a decent one to go for, but I think their biggest power really comes for, you know those massive island maps where you have to defend and one of your teammates has gone for Wanda? <laughs> I think nothing can penetrate Austria-Hungary's Wanda M of fortifications. They are so damn strong. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you if you have like balloon towers on the shore and there's just loads and loads of Wanda Emmers already set up there, you're going to find it impossible to break that deadlock. Like, you can't even get close. So, yeah, of course, the key is to stop them before they get to that point. But, um, you know, if you're looking for a niche, I think that's probably Austria-Hungary's one. And the rest of them, you know, I think it's probably not worth talking about. But maybe I'm wrong, you know, you guys tell me. Uh, and I'm going to put France at the bottom. Sorry, France players. I just think they're not that good. Uh, they have a relatively fast light tank, the FT-17, but it does do less damage. So it's like, yeah, you know, it's okay, I guess. Um, and just heavy tanks in this game are just awful. I'm sorry. And, and, and aircraft carriers as well are just not good enough. They're getting better with reduced pop cap, but still just not good enough. Uh, so I don't know. I just, I just don't think they've got too much of a niche really other than fun, of course. 
I will say their niche though is probably in the bombers. I've seen their bombers used quite well. Uh, so if you do like air power and you're playing Western Europe and you're like, which one do I go for air power? Probably France is is, is your choice there, probably. Um, but yeah, so there you go. There's a niche for everything, but as you can see, as we go further down the list, it's harder and harder to justify, uh, you know, picking that option. In my opinion, of course. Let's move to Eastern Europe. So Eastern Europe, we have the Partisans to represent Russia. We have the uh, Saboteurs to represent Poland. Of course, Austria-Hungary are also attackable via Eastern Europe. And um, Soldier uh, from regular abstract. I'm going to go ahead and start again by just putting Russia at the very, very top. I do think that they are the best faction in the game. I know they were just nerfed, um, but I think they probably still are the best faction in the game. They've got access to everything really a little bit like abstract but they do some of them just better uh so if i just show you russia here there's so many options and i think what really makes them powerful is the combination of death scythes soldiers which are really cheap i will add plus partisans which are even cheaper so they're really good chaff and the fact that they can make these anti-aircraft things from the stables uh which is just you know it's 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 relatively cheap compared to it's a, it's, it's a relatively easy option compared to other factions and um so yeah you can't even counter the death sites and the soldiers with the air power because they got the anti-aircraft uh tachankas i don't know how to say that but yeah and of course the red devils are pretty decent as well in terms of a cavalryman option so, so yeah they're, pre they're pretty strong in that regards they do have some IR2 power as well but generally speaking um, i think this stuff is, is is missable this is where the strength is Next, I would say this is harder. This is this is harder. I think I'll probably put abstract in second place again. I think I will say that this abstract is actually stronger than this abstract because this abstract has access to East Eastern Europe uh, units such as the Metal Ages Archer that you can get out of their barracks. Even though it's uh, Middle Ages the barracks, they can still make Metal Age Archers. So you have access to really cheap chaff. So you're able to support yourself. Of course, Russia doesn't need that because they got partisans as their cheap chaff. But you know, uh, the abstract version can do like a pseudo pseudo Russia a little bit as well. And then uh, you, they got access to just generally speaking, I think Eastern Europe's uh, barracks is just cheaper, which is what you want when you reach Industrial Revolution because you already have expensive options, right? That's why you tech. But you want to cover yourself in the times where you need to buy yourself time. You use cheap units for that. And Eastern Europe is just cheaper. So Abstract goes in second place here for me and does beat the Western Europe equivalent. In third place, uh, I would say for the exact same reason as Abstract, by the way, that Austria-Hungary, Eastern Europe is better than um, Austria-Hungary, Western Europe. But the difference here is probably, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not massive, I think. But yeah, so exactly the same faction here. Although I will put Poland ahead of them, I just think that Poland has got some decent, um, it's got decent, decent options with. I'll show you here. Tankettes uh, are quite fast moving and relatively cheap, you know, compared to what other people can make yeah, more easily accessible and you can spam your opponent with them and go and shoot up their workers and stuff. And I think the U-Lands are okay, but I think the real niche of Poland comes in the stone mines. If you're in a map where there isn't many trees and stuff and you're going to struggle for wood stone mines are pretty great and especially because no one else really gets access to any kind of stone mine unless they've also picked stone, uh, Poland as well you can go put it on all your teammates uh, stone mines as well of course if it's a 1v1 or something then you know you just have your own ones to choose from but yeah so by the way in case you can't tell this is like this video is about 1v1 2v2 team match all of them so it's quite generic advice you have to apply to yourself which one you think sounds the most suitable for you right so yeah i think there's something to be said for dragon's teeth being a better version of the anti-tank wall but yeah yeah you know it's it's okay amphibious tank is a maybe a funny way to surprise your opponent by showing up on the shores but i think realistically it's not really gonna it's not really gonna it's gonna be too expensive it's not really gonna work so that's it for uh, Eastern Europe. Now let's look at Western Asia. We got the Abstract Soldier again. We've got the Immortal to represent uh, Iran or Persia. We have the Sniper to represent Turkey and the Sikh to represent India. This is actually harder to decide than the previous two. But I think, I think you guys can disagree with me here because I'm really not sure. I think the Soldier of Abstract is going to go at the top here because I think Abstract is Western Asia's best option just because of how strong uh, abstract is 
um, and the fact that now they have access to even cheaper West Asian uh, Middle Ages units. To be fair, West Asian Middle Ages units are kind of suck in terms of in, in their barracks, you know, as apps and stuff. But hey, you know, the Sarbaz and they're cheap, and um, that's what we've already talked about that, so I won't go over it again. So I think that makes them the best. Second place is a, is also a difficult one, but I think I will give it to um, Persia. Just about, they have access to. Uh, the camels here, which of course they're not going to be better than a lot of you know Europe's tanks and things, but they are easier to get. They're cheaper to tech into, and um, yeah, you just need to build the armory. You can even upgrade the camels from the Middle Ages if you if you have them. So I, I think I think they're quite decent in that regards. Uh, it, they're mobile cannon. You know, it's like usually the cannon's quite slow, but in this case it can be quite quick. Of course, Persia also continues to retain the access to the West Asian cannon. Which is quite good. Um, obviously, not like point for not, not stat for stat. There's going to be other cannons that are better, like the Turkish cannon. However, it is cheaper and easier to get, right? They also have access to the Sea Gardens, which I think, um, which is passive food income. You know, it's something. It's okay. Sometimes it will work out quite cool. You can get if you build it somewhere cheeky and the uh, opponent doesn't know it's there. It could be quite good. But yeah, and then in Industrial Revolution 2, you've got the uh, Gatherers, which can pump out the temporary lifespan immortals. In the sandbox, of course, they don't expire, but in the actual game, they will fall over and die after, I don't actually know how much time, maybe a, maybe a minute or something. Um, so yeah, people spam Gatherers and try and drive in the opponent, de uh, deploy immortals, and then drive away. I think I think Persia's quite decent there in that regard. Um, they do lose to a lot of the European uh, versions, I but I, yeah, it's okay. Like I think they have a niche, and it's quite a wide niche. So like I think uh, picking them is all right. This one's actually really hard for me to pick what comes next, whether it's India or um, Turkey. So oh, it's really hard. I think I think I think I'm gonna give it to Turkey. So I'll tell you why. Turkey uh, has access to what you would be doing if you go Turkey is you'll be making snipers. You'll be making. Um, uh, especially for defense it's quite good uh, and light cannons as well are decent or you can spam the uh, horses with the RPGs uh, they're quite slow moving but they're pretty pretty devastating if you manage to pull it off as a strategy especially in, like team games you usually have enough time to amass loads of them and uh, you can really steamroll your opponent with them uh, artillery tower I'm not sure if it's good but it is fun um, maybe in some niche scenarios you can put pressure on your opponent with them you know uh, but I think uh, the reason I sort of put them over India is something that just 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 pushes them over the edge which is the improved mines there are a lot of scenarios like in big team games especially with the islands and stuff like you run out of metal a lot um, and having a turkey player with improved mines to generate passive metal income um, can really give you the edge you and your team so I think the niche is more likely to be relevant in Turkey. And that's why I put them ahead. India. So India, uh, like I said, is very, very close. I think they're quite cool that they have the population upgrade um, over everyone else. Same as China as well. These two factions can have even more a higher pop cap. I think with India, the strategy really, um, I do think the six are kind of cool. But the strategy really is the elephant uh, machine guns are quite good. Unfortunately, Elephant Trench Mortar is not. The Wheel Tank is okay. Um, it's okay as an option, but European versions are probably better. And the Fury of Durg is quite funny. You can pull it off. Maybe it's a less good version of the Gathra strategy. You know, you drive over and then you deploy the Tigers and then you drive away and the Tigers cause chaos. Um, but I do think the Immortals are going are to be better in that regard. However, I, you do get access to the Fury of the Durg much faster in, in IR1, I think. Uh, whereas, you know, Persia, you have to wait to IR2. So. You know, there's trade-offs. There's trade-offs to be had there. I think it's worth noting here as well that India will have access to Western Asia Middle Ages units in this version here compared to its Eastern uh, Asia version here, which I'll talk about. And I do think that the Western Asia Middle Ages uh, troops, as I mentioned, is just generally uh, not as good. They're like cheaper and weaker, but like you know, Sikhs are already kind of cheap, I think, and just India does think, do things on the cheap generally, so um, it's like less of a win, whereas for abstract, it's like they're quite expensive generally, so to pair expensive with cheap gives you more options, whereas like India's like pairing cheap with cheap. Obviously, it's not, it's not really cheap, but you, you get what I mean, like comparatively, right, I hope. So, 
the final option. We have uh, light trench mortars to represent Japan. We have the soldier for abstract, the militiaman for China, and the Sikh for India. I am going to put at the very top, probably, it's a very close one. It was between abstract and India, and I'm going to put India at the top. And this might surprise you because India up here, India down here. But like there's something that India sort of lacks and I'll show you it again if you look. I remember I told you the light trench mortars aren't so great and you know the wheel tank option. Bear in mind they don't have ac access to the abstract like powerful you know tanks and stuff. So like it's okay they're good but in the IR Industrial Revolution 1 when they pair with Eastern Europe's Middle Ages units specifically I'm talking the hand cannon. It's actually a really powerful combination to have hand cannons and elephant machine guns and then of course some Sikhs for like chaff units and you know just keep your opponents busy or whatever. Um, it's actually a really powerful strategy so it's like okay so you know by the way just because India's at the bottom here doesn't mean they're bad it's actually West Asia is very close they're all really really close together it's just here it's like I just think that just takes them it just makes them so much better, and and therefore they, I, I do think they're the best. But in very in very close second place is um, abstract. So as I've mentioned many times, uh, they get to pair with cheap uh, East Asian Middle Ages units. Uh, and East Asian Middle Ages units are actually quite good as well. So they don't need the hand cannon the same way the Sikhs, uh, the, the Indians need the hand cannons, but they still benefit from them. It's still a good thing to have. I think with abstract, you're usually going to be relying more on like the samurai and stuff like that maybe the ronin and things while you you get your um your economy up and then you can transition into your own abstract units like cavalrymen and things like that and to eventually go later games so if you're going if you're planning to go late game you know maybe maybe it's better than india well it's already late game if it's ir but you know what i mean even later game then maybe abstract would be better but i think in most cases india is, is the right choice here there was a reason why it was a meta for so long in a, in a, in a previous patch uh, and then the final two here I'll go over, so you have China which is quite niche of course, they're a very unique way of playing, you basically spam militiamen and overwhelm your opponents with wave after wave of your own men at them, and it's, um, it's really fun actually. The alternative option is of course mounted guardsmen which is probably better in like 1v1s and stuff I think, um, gives you more flexibility, uh, but yeah so I, I would say like a combination of like militiamen and maybe some soldiers and stuff, uh, and then it, depending on what's happening in the game Game, you got the option for mounted guardsmen. I think it's worth mentioning here that China's uh, power um, is also <laughs> like a secret power that they have really is that people maybe don't think about is that they don't really need metal in Industrial Revolution 1. They don't need much metal, you know, it's very, very cheap. That's probably that's why they can't build a mine. They're the only faction that can't build even the regular mine. Uh, but on a map that has very little metal and maybe you have to share with your uh, teammates and stuff you know maybe if you go China you can allow your teammate to have all the metal and then they can go for one of the European countries you know something like that in like a 2v2 I don't know it's a, it's a, it's a it gives you flexibility um, and a usefulness to your team and of course spamming uh, infantry cheap chaff is a really great way to pair with a uh, another faction maybe like uh, Great Britain's LMG troopers I mean think how deadly that combo is maybe I should do a video of like the coolest combos but it gets quite complicated I suppose and of course if you do have access to metal you can go down the foreign supply center route in the Industrial Revolution 2 and you end up getting like you know all these awesome tanks uh, quite quickly anyway so yeah I think China I think China are pretty good and they just got buffed as well so they, they might even be I haven't seen them since the, the patch, but like they might even be higher than this. For now, I'll put them here to be safe, but they might be second or even first place probably because these two are so close. So, uh, in last place, uh, honestly, I, I, sorry, I love Japan, but it's just like, I just don't think uh, very good as a, as, a, as a country to players. They have, I think, to play Japan, you want to be going to... So, you can spam the light trench mortars, right? But the, the question I have is, why would you pick... Japan only for light trench mortars. It's a cool strategy and especially on like my recent video you might have seen that the guy was spamming them on a very unique map where it was like it was quite interesting because it was very defensive play and then he was able to 
slowly siege with them and there was no way to like run around or flank them or it was very limited way so it ended up being quite good for him but also because there was so much seed it takes me to my other benefit of japan is they have quite good naval uh, dominance really especially in the bigger maps with the late game with it uh you have you have more options and things with the yamato and stuff but i think their main strength is if you like aviation so if you like planes and stuff uh, Japan is probably the way to go. They've got loads of fun options there. I personally don't, and I do think the planes are a bit weak, although they did just all get buffed, so you never know. But, um, you know, in the Navy, they can even launch planes, uh, suicide planes and stuff. So, you know, they, they, they got potential. They have a niche. If you like a particular play style, and it's this play style, then Japan is probably the way for you, especially if you like going East Asia already. Anyway, I think that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed. I uh, hope I, it was entertaining at least, if not helpful, and I'll catch you in another video. Peace.